Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. You ready to jump into some fascinating news? Always am. Let's hear it. All right, so today we're tuning into Japan. It's like we're flipping through channels in a Tokyo newsroom, getting a glimpse of what's making headlines in art film, even fashion. I love this. It's like a cultural exchange through news snippets. Exactly. And I'm already hooked. Did you see this exhibition celebrating the 100th birthday of photographer Takahashi Hideko? Oh yeah, definitely saw that one. It's incredible. Not only that, but it features works by some absolute legends of Japanese photography. For sure. You've got Domen Ken Kimura, Ihei. Oh, the list goes on. Seriously. Yeah. These are photographers who've had a major impact, not just in Japan, but globally. I think what makes this exhibition so spectral is that it gives us a glimpse into a specific moment in time. Yeah. And one thing that really stood out to me was the focus on photographing actresses. Mm -hmm. It's like we're not just seeing beautiful images, but also getting a glimpse into how society viewed women and celebrity back then. It's a fascinating observation. And it makes you wonder how those perceptions have evolved over time. For anyone who's in Tokyo between November 9th and December 8th, you can check it out yourself at the Tokyo Photographic Art Museum. Definitely worth a visit. Now, speaking of cultural perspectives, let's talk about a couple of art exhibitions that caught my eye. Okay. First up, we have an exhibition at the Gifu Aina City Museum. They're focusing on ukiyo-yo artists. But here's the twist. It's all about the male artists. It's so interesting to see an exhibition that challenges our assumptions. I feel like we often hear about the great female Yukioi artists. Right, but what about the men? This is a chance to explore a different facet of Yukioi. Maybe uncover some hidden gems. Exactly. You know, there's also an exhibition at the Kyoto National Museum that looks really interesting. Tell me more. It features the work of Honen, a Buddhist monk who founded the Jodo Shu School, which is a branch of Pure Land Buddhism. Okay, so a pretty important figure. Absolutely. All right. His teachings had a profound impact on Japanese society, and his artwork offers a window into his spiritual and artistic vision. I'm definitely adding that to my list. Okay, enough about still images. Let's move on to the world of moving pictures. Always a good move. The 32nd Numazu Film Festival is happening, and I have to share this quote from the organizer. They said, where there are movies, people gather. It's such a simple statement, but it really gets to the heart of why we love film. It does. In an age where we're constantly plugged in, individually consuming content film festivals remind us of the magic of a collective experience. I love that the power of shared emotion and storytelling is really special. And this festival sounds like it's going all out. They're screening the classic, Gladiator, A Hero's Cry. A classic. There's also the Echigo Sumari Art Triennale happening around the same time. And don't forget the 21st anniversary of the Nobutai Art Space, designed by Jacob Van Rees. Oh, right, Nobutai. That name's a nod to, no, the traditional Japanese theater known for its stylized movements and those hauntingly beautiful masks. It makes you wonder how that traditional influence shows up in Van Rees' contemporary design. Right, it's like a fusion of past and present. Okay, speaking of fascinating choices, Buckle up, because we're about to dive into the world of fashion. All right, bring it on. An article from Mimolette caught my eye. It's all about Korean fashion brands favored by a discerning 40-something writer. Yeah, that got my attention, too. Yeah. It's like they're speaking directly to us. Exactly. And I, I love how they use that word discerning. It makes you feel like you're part of an exclusive club. Right. Like you've graduated to a level of style that appreciates quality and timelessness. Absolutely. So let's dive into these brands, shall we? Let's do it. We have Recto Verso. That name immediately makes me think of front and back. Like maybe it's a play on duality. Interesting. Maybe their designs can be worn in multiple ways, adaptable to different occasions and styles. That's a great interpretation. Okay, next up we have ORR. It's short and mysterious. What do you make of it? My guess is that ORR leans towards minimalism. Yep. You know, clean lines, subtle details, a focus on high quality fabrics. You could be right. It's amazing how much a brand's name can convey. It's true. They really think about those names. Okay, and then there's nothing written. I mean, come on, how ironic is that for a fashion brand? Definitely makes you think. Mm. Does it suggest a focus on understated elegance? Letting the clothes speak for themselves. I like that idea. Okay, this next one is a personal favorite, Manaha. It's not just a clothing brand. It's a shop that features ceramics and artwork as well as their own line of apparel. Now that's a cool concept. Yeah. It's like they're creating a whole lifestyle experience. I'm getting major lifestyle brand vibes, but in a good way. Okay, last but not least we have, and I know I'm going to butcher this, LE17 September. Le 17 September. It's French for September 17th. Ah, of course. 
Yeah. So what's the story behind this brand? Well, they've got some serious global recognition. They're even featured in high-end department stores like Le Bon Marche in Paris. Wow, that's impressive. It is. They're definitely a brand to watch. So before we move on, any early favorites from this fashion lineup? I'm kind of drawn to Monaha and their whole art meets fashion concept. That one is really intriguing. But honestly, that nothing written name has me hooked. I need to see what their aesthetic is all about. No, me too. Anyway. Okay, let's switch gears again. This time to the world of podcasts. There's a buzz around Pontipass and the final chapter of their smartphone series. It's called Smartphone Final Hacking Game. Ooh, that sounds right up our alley. And with Notori Rio composing the theme song and Emes featured, I'm expecting some serious audio drama. This could be good. All right, now for a few rapid fire news items before we dive deeper into some of these topics. First up, we have a mention of the legendary American music producer Quincy Jones. A legend indeed. I wonder what brings him to Japan. Then there's an exhibition of Louise Bourgeois' work happening at Rapongi Hills. Louise Bourgeois is such a fascinating artist. Her work often explores really personal and sometimes challenging themes like the human body, sexuality, family dynamics. Intense. Her large-scale sculptures, especially her iconic spiders, are really something to see. Giant spiders, you say. I'm both terrified and intrigued. You and me both. We also have choreographer Damien Jallet mentioned in the news. I wonder if his work might connect thematically to bourgeois exploration of the body. You know, I was thinking the same thing. It highlights how different artistic disciplines can sometimes converge, exploring similar themes through different mediums. Absolutely. Yeah. And finally, a bit of Formula One news to round things out. Red Bull's element. Dr. Marco made quite a statement saying, the saying that it takes three years to become an F1 driver is outdated. That's a bold claim. What do you think he means by that? It's hard to say for sure, but it makes you wonder what's changing in the sport. Is it new training methods, more sophisticated simulators, or maybe just a new generation of drivers who are quicker to learn? Maybe we're seeing a shift in the mindset of young athletes, a greater willingness to push boundaries and embrace new technology. Possibly. It's right. definitely something to keep an eye on. Okay. I need a minute to catch my breath. We've covered a lot of ground from photography legends to emerging Korean fashion brands from our exhibitions to film festivals, and even a dash of Formula One. That's what we do here on The Deep Dive. We dive deep. It's been quite a journey, but we're just getting started. There's so much to unpack here, so many threads to pull on. Why don't we take a quick break and then come back and delve deeper into some of these fascinating stories? Sounds like a plan. We'll be right back after a short break. That quote about film bringing people together, it's really stuck with me. You know, in today's world, we're so used to experiencing media individually. That's true. Headphones in staring at our phones. Right. But then you have something like the Numazu Film Festival, and it's all about that shared experience. You know, that collective gasp, the laughter rippling through the audience. It's a powerful reminder that film at its core is a communal experience. Speaking of powerful experiences, we have to talk more about those Korean fashion brands. Oh, yes. The ones curated by the discerning 40-something writer. What is it about that phrase that resonates so much with us? I think it speaks to a certain stage of life, hmm. you know, where you've developed a strong sense of personal style. Yeah. You're not chasing trends anymore. You're investing in pieces that truly reflect who you are. Exactly. And honestly, I think we both have a bit of a soft spot for all things Korean. Maybe just a little. Okay, back to fashion. That brand, L17 September. It sounds so elegant. It does. And the fact that they're featured in high-end department stores worldwide tells you they're doing something special. Their commitment to quality must be top-notch. It makes me wonder if their designs incorporate any elements of traditional Korean clothing, you know, in a modern global way. That's a great point. It would add another layer of depth to their brand. Now I'm even more curious to see their collections. Me too. Okay, but we can't forget about Louise Bourgeois and those giant spider sculptures. Oh, right. You mentioned they're more than just creepy crawlies. They are. They're often seen as representations of motherhood, weaving intricate webs that symbolize the complexities of family relationships. Wow, I never thought of them that way. It's amazing how art can take something so simple and imbue it with such deep meaning. That's the power of a great artist, to make us think and feel things we didn't expect. As we're talking, I'm noticing a theme here. You know, pushing boundaries, challenging conventions. I see it too. We saw it with the male Yukioi artists. And with that, nothing written fashion brand. And now in Formula One with Dr. Marco's statement about the changing timeline for drivers. It's like a spirit of innovation is running through all these stories. It makes you wonder if it's a reflection of a larger cultural shift. Perhaps. It's a reminder that change is constant 
and that every generation finds its own way to leave its mark on the world. Okay, I'm dying to dive into that smartphone final hacking game podcast. The title alone is giving me chills. Me too. And don't forget about those nothing written designs. I'm ready to unravel the mystery behind that brand. <laughs> so much to explore. But let's take a moment to gather our thoughts and we'll be right back. It's amazing how these seemingly random news snippets can paint such a vivid picture of a culture. It is. It's like we're piecing together a puzzle with each story we uncover. What stands out to me is this interesting balance between tradition and innovation that we see throughout these stories. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We've got those deeply rooted traditions like the no theater and the reverence for figures like Honan. But at the same time, there's this incredible energy, this drive to push boundaries and explore new frontiers, like with those edgy Korean fashion brands or even the evolving world of Formula One. It's almost like they're embracing both the past and the future simultaneously. It's a fascinating duality, and I think it's part of what makes Japanese culture so captivating. Okay, enough philosophizing for now. Are we ready to dive into that smartphone final hacking game podcast? Let's do it. I'm curious to see where they take this final chapter. And with Ntori Rayo on the theme song, we're in for a real treat. It's going to be epic. Yeah. All right, as we wrap up this deep dive into Japanese news, any final thoughts? You know what really struck me? The sheer creative energy that seems to permeate every aspect of Japanese culture. It's inspiring. I agree. It's like they've fully embraced this idea of constant evolution, always seeking new ways to express themselves and engage with the world. And I think that's a great takeaway for all of us. To stay curious, to be open to new experiences, and to never stop exploring. Well said. And on that note, folks, we've reached the end of another deep dive. We hope you enjoyed this journey through the world of Japanese news. And until next time... Keep those minds curious and stay tuned for more deep dives.